questions. Yeah. Yeah, thank very you. Well. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, back to uh, the regulation um, and the financial services and markets bill. Um, the given given the uh, decision by the government that it will be able to directly regulate to make amend or revoke rules where there are matters of significant public interest, um, and given that so far the government hasn't defined what public interest is mm. in their in their eyes, notably the minister when he was here. Uh, is, do you, are you concerned that this is a threat to the independence of regulators? I, I am concerned about it. I, I think, we've, we've, I think I've had, we have had this discussion yeah, once Deputy before, but Governor I'm happy, to, to, was, no, happy yeah. to develop the thought. Yes, I am. Um, I think, let me start by saying, I think there's a, there's a sort of well-established sort of division of responsibilities. I think, you know, don't mind me treading on your toes for a moment. Parliament legislates. The government, or the, you know, send, or the form of the Chancellor, sends me remit letters every year yep. describing how they interpret the remit, particularly in the light of their other policies. I think that works quite that works well. We as regulators operate the regime. You hold us to account, and all of these parts are important. And what I'm concerned about is that I think there's power muddies that division of responsibility, and so I'm not a supporter of it in that sense. I'll yeah. also... Sorry. Well, no, I, I, I'm going to come back, come, back to, I will come back to the point you made at the start, which is an important one. I also have to tell you, I mean, if, let me say two things about sort of the, the international situation. I mean, first of all, I think there's a lot of talk about competitiveness. I think it's important to bear in mind that in, in, in an international financial centre, which is what we are, we're the world's leading international financial centre in many ways, Part of competitiveness is having an effective legal system, yep. and part of it is having an effective regulatory system. And, and it's not, you know, I'm not just saying this because I would, wouldn't I? I mean, firms will say this to you. I mean, it's not just me who says it. Um, and, you know, we must not threaten that. We have, but our government has, by uh, breaching well, international law on other things. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the legal system here. Sure. I mean, the, the, the English common law system. Because yep. it's interesting that wholesale financial activity generally takes place in common law systems. Not so English ones, but common law systems. The other point I'm making, I have to go back to the, sort of the last couple of months. I mean, we have damaged our reputation yeah. internationally. Because of the domestic Because of what happened. I mean, I was in September. Washington, as is well known, because I was <laughs> somewhat in the news, uh, you know, at the IMF annual meetings, yeah. which is the, the biggest events of the year internationally. It's at the G7, the G20, and so on. Uh, and we have damaged our... I mean, people saying, you know, we didn't think the UK would do this. The, 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 you're talking about the mini budget. Yes. And the trust. And it will take out. longer to rebuild yep. that reputation than it will be yep. to correct the guilt, guilt curve. And that damaged financial so stability. So I we want have to, to ask you the question: tread carefully. Does this does this risk posing a risk to sti financial stability well, if it is interpreted? I think. It, I think. In the way if that it's that a was. very if it's a, a power that is interpreted as going into our remit, it yep. muddies the waters. Now, here's the point. You made an interesting point at the beginning. I wanted to pick up on it. Going back to four chancellors ago, when the Prime Minister was Chancellor and the chief, now Chief Secretary was Economic Secretary, when this discussion started, I mean, there was a discussion, to your point, about the public interest. Yeah. You know, and, and I can see, because I had some experiences, more when I was at the FCA than yes. at the Bank of England, that there are issues that come up Yep. which are outside the remit of the regulator, yep. which, are, yeah, which can be difficult to handle. National security is the yep. best example. It's probably, I'm probably slightly treading on the toes of my former organization here. We had a case, I think it might come up at this committee, it did at one committee, of a, a Russian listing. And people said, well, why haven't you stepped in and stopped this? And I have to say, look, you know, it's a national security matter. Actually, we don't have a power, and we shouldn't have it. You know, the FCA or the Bank of England can't exercise national security. Yep. So there is an issue there, but that is explicitly outside the statutory remit of the regulator. That's saying, what if there's a, to your words, what if there's a public interest issue that isn't in your remit, but is relevant? It would be we helpful. could discuss that. Sure. It would be helpful if the government set out, in, you know, laid out what they mean by public interest. Well, I haven't seen it. I, I, we haven't either. Uh, no, I mean, I... Yeah. You know, so you I haven't, haven't seen any, the draft. You haven't been. I haven't, I, you haven't seen the draft. No, I saw some. I, I, to be honest with you, I saw regularly. a skeleton of, of something four chancellors ago, but I know that's not 
Or that, chancellors ago. That's well, we've got, a very we've got long time ago. <laughs> That's not yeah. long, I know. But um, no, it was when the prime minister well, is was it, chancellor. Is it right that the current chancellor, current chancellor who's speaking to you weekly isn't addressing the very issue that could compromise your independence, your institution's independence, well, we as will well be as others. We will be discussing it. I mean, obviously, well, he's been quite focused on fiscal policy, I think, and that's important. But this is important for the it reasons is. you've said. It is, and we will um, discuss and it. And just, just to, the reason why I think it's so important, uh, and I'm sh- I hope you would agree, that we need to understand what public interest is, because... Um, of course, the government can argue quite correctly that it has a democratic mandate, but there are specific arrangements for regulators correctly for the reasons you've said. What we know is that financial businesses, for instance, or, or, or their lobbyists, met Treasury ministers nearly 200 times last year alone. Um, in the same period, tre- Treasury ministers met consumer organisations fewer than a dozen times. Um, So there is a clear imbalance between the consumer interests and financial services and their interests and their ability to lobby government ministers. Um, And my concern is that actually there is a a real risk that ministers will come under pressure and political pressure and and pressure from powerful lobby interests. um, And that could skew what public interest actually means uh, and, Mm. and damage independence. Well, that's why I think... And we saw that example of, sorry, the, the former chancellors. Which one? I think the last one. The, the, uh, sorry. Um, the chancellor, the mini-budget chancellor, um, uh, Kwasi Kwateng. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if I should refer to him by name or his constituency, but um, as I'm not in the chamber. Um, that he was, you know, there were reports about him, being influ- uh, him having meetings after the budget with his former employers and so on. Mm. So there are, there are issues around the nature of the relationship between politicians, ministers and other institutions. Well, that's why, I, uh, that's a really good point. I mean, that's why I set out at the beginning very deliberately the sort of this, what I think is quite carefully constructed division of responsibilities, what you yeah. do, what we do, what ministers do. Yeah. Because I think it's, you know, you, it's a balance that seems to me to work effectively. And, and I would say this, I'm, of course, we're not, we're not democratically elected, uh, and we have to be very conscious of this, but I, you know, the whole system is a democracy. It's not one bit yeah. of it's a democracy. Yeah. And, and you know, in our legitimacy, you know, the reason our accountability to you is so important is because it's actually mm. part of our legitimacy as part of a democratic system. Sorry if you, were, pompous, to, if you were discussing, what, uh, discussing the, the um, changes, um, what I'm hearing is that if the, uh, the, there may be a necessity, but it needs to be very, very carefully defined around the points you made around national security or things that go outside the scope. It needs to be very, very clear. And at the moment, it's not. And well, I think two things. I think, you, yes, to, you, to that point. I'd also add that I think, it, and, and again, it's not for me to say how this should be done, but I think Parliament, you know, I would hope when it debates that, would consider what role as an institution, Parliament plays in the, in the whole sort of legitimacy and accountability of that system for the reason that you gave a few minutes ago, which I think is important um, if, if, if that's the road we go down. I don't think it's... I, I have to say, because of the remit letter system, I don't actually think this is a necessary power do you think, do you think there is a within general, our remit. Sure. OK, so do, do you think there is a general trend now? We heard some of it during the leadership campaign, uh, Conservative leaders' leadership campaign, um, and we've heard it among uh, parliament, some parliamentarians, you know, a, a sort of assault, maybe that's too hard, hard a w- word, on the independence of the bank. And given the, the rates are going up and the things that you've had to do necessarily, some would argue, um, that, uh, and in some cases your responses had to be in the relation to the mini-budget, that actually the bank can find itself being the full guy um, and um, because it's convenient for some people politically to, to do that. And, and of course, as you, we know, you know, we've had exchanges where I've been uh, critical at times of decisions that the FCA made under yeah, your, just, your um, that. rule, yeah. and that's, that's our prerogative mm. to do so. But is there a risk that um, the bank's independence is going to be under further attack and assault because of the kind of pressures, if you like, and the things you're having to do in, in the case of September, you had to respond necessarily, uh, but now because of the wider issues we've discussed earlier on, uh, international well, dimension I, as well as domestic dimension. I would say, obviously, our independence uh, you know, is absolutely paramount in my you know, thinking and all the way I go about doing my role. 
I also am you know, very clear, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, that if there was any threat to our independence, I would expect to tell this committee you know, that that was, in my view, the case, because you're a very important part of well, this. I would put it to you that this so-called public interest amendment, if it's not carefully de defined, and the FCA, your former institution that you ran, yeah. and the chairman made it very clear, yes, that, that it, like you have, internationally, there's a real risk to um, anything that could undermine the independence of these institutions mm. to our economic stability, our financial stability. I would put it to you that, given that the Chancellor meets you on a, a weekly basis, this should be Perhaps not this week. Well, I can't speak for the Chancellor, week, but should be I, central. I, I, think, I think it's well known by ministers what I think on this but issue. They don't seem to, despite that, they don't seem to be um, making. They, they don't seem to be making much progress on addressing these points. And you discussed the draft amendment four chancellors ago. Um, now, even before the mini budget oh. chaos, shouldn't shouldn't this be a priority for the ministers to discuss this? Provision with you and other regulators. Well, I mean, I think Given that, regulators yeah. are you and your um, previous organisation, the heads of those mm. institutions, Nicola Rathi and the chairman um, Richard Lloyd, when he gave evidence, have yeah. made it very explicitly clear they're concerned yeah, well, about Richard's it. Richard's a very serious. You know, he's, he's very serious. I mean, I you know, I respect what he said, and I thought it was well put. Uh, what I would say is this. I mean, you know, you know, you know. I mean, this amendment has been promised to be introduced into Parliament for some time, and it hasn't appeared yet. I haven't seen it. So, you know, yes, of course I want to discuss it, but, um, you know, I haven't seen it, frankly, and I don't know precisely why it hasn't been introduced into Parliament when it has. I think that's a question you have to ask ministers. Yeah, and, and we have, and the yeah. minister couldn't even define public interest. Uh, and the, the issue here is that, actually, we're being asked, Parliament is being asked to pass, allow ministers to make those decisions around what, what public interest is. So, so Parliament is being taken out of the equation as well, which is of real concern, because you rely on Parliament to be able to uh, uh, stand up for, uh, and this committee in particular, to, to uh, highlight the importance of independence. Yeah, and I rely on you to ask me what's going on, and um, you know, that thereby we get the accountability. Yep. Well, mm. that is that is that is part of the problem here. Okay. I will I will yeah. stop here. But I very much hope that the chancellor and we will raise it with the chancellor <coughs> uh, when he's here next week. We as certainly well. will. Thank you. We certainly will. Um, thank you very much, Rishanara, and 